gosh, as a clinical dietitian, keto is like bad for you because the FDA says it is. And there's so many studies that show it is bad. You're killing people. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Well, hey gang, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly. I am a keto dietitian and you want to watch my story on how I switch from the plant-based lifestyle to a keto anti-inflammatory lifestyle. And I'll tell you why I did it. Now you want to watch the video, but to make matters super short, I had migraines, I was fat, I did a lot of research. And today I'm squashing the rumors on how the keto diet can increase inflammation, but super full disclosure. I can understand why dietitians and other health professionals are very skeptical of the keto plan because I was myself. We have to be honest, when keto first came out, the influencers were a little bit scary and somewhat unapproachable. And some of them kind of talk about some weird stuff. And really, we want to squash that. Now, inflammation is thought to be a leading driver of diseases like cancer, like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, arthritis, PCOS, all of these disorders. And keto is a diet that is high fat, it's higher in fat, a lower carb content where we cut out sugar. And really gang, the first culprit of inflammation is number one, sugar. There's tons of studies that exist. And I tell this to my colleagues all the time, linking sugar with inflammation. And in addition, added sugars themselves are harmful and that they can increase inflammation, which can lead to disease. Now consuming a diet high in sugar and high fructose corn syrup drives inflammation that can lead to disease. There's study after study that shows that. It can also counteract the anti-inflammatory effects of omega-3 fats. So it is safe to say keto takes the win on this one since we cut sugar out of our diet. However, I understand where some of my colleagues come from because there's something to think about when it comes to sugar alcohols and the sugar alcohol in particular, maltitol. This is because maltitol can cause inflammation in the gut and causes gas and bloat. We talked about this time and time again. Maltitol does actually have a glycemic index of 36, which can cause again, a little bit of spike in those blood sugar levels. So again, in my clinic, so keto can beat inflammation, we not only cut sugar, but we make sure to X maltitol, which is in a lot of our keto label products. So I get it, but still for me, keto takes the win. Now round two is fats. And this is where my colleagues completely lose it. If you're gonna eat all that fat, you're gonna die of heart disease. You're gonna get a heart attack and your cholesterol is gonna go up and all your triglycerides are gonna go up. Da, 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 da. Again, I absolutely understand this because when keto, not when it first came out, because it's been around for a very long time, but a lot of the influencers would say things like, just add ranch dressing to your vegetables. This is a half-half split, because we want to make sure you are consuming wonderful omega-3 fats. And that's your olive oils and your avocado oils. You've gotta be careful of the garbage that's sold in stores, like your margarines. Margarines contain trans fats, like that I can't believe it's not butter, that's on all the you know handouts that were given in the hospital, so you get a strike there. Those trans fats can definitely have been shown to be related to inflammation, lowering our HDL, which is the good cholesterol level. So please cut out the margarine. Don't even do that if you're keto or even following low fat because those trans fats have been linked to high levels of inflammatory markers such as a C-reactive protein. Now in one study, C-reactive proteins were 78% higher among women who reported the highest trans fat intake. So gang, get rid of the margarine. I see where my profession's coming from. My favorite spread, it's Kerrygold. Do not cook items plain. That is disgusting and terrible. And again, reach for those olive oils, those avocado oils, because those omega-3 rich foods can help and have been linked to decreasing inflammation in the body. So this is where we have to do keto right and not reach for those terrible fats like the margarines that are on the shelf. Now, again, I tell my clients to go for extra light olive oil because it has a very kind of 
plain flavor, you know, nothing insulting or nothing of that sort, um, and just pour it on the vegetables. Research suggests that oleic acid, which is the main fatty acid in olive oil, can reduce, this is huge, can reduce those inflammatory markers like your C-reactive protein. And I encourage all of my patients to get their C-reactive protein levels tested. It's a simple lab test so we can see those inflammation markers come down. Another study showed that olive oil antioxidants can help inhibit some genes that drive inflammation. So we're not drinking ranch dressing, everybody calm down. Round three is the refined carbs. And the argument that we always get is, well, you need carbs to live, Shelly. You need carbs to live, you need carbs for energy. Well, those refined carbs, even the ones that have been promoted in healthy diets like your pretzels, have a high glycemic index than your unprocessed ones. And those high glycemic foods raise blood sugar more rapidly than your low glycemic index foods, leading to inflammation. I am getting irate. I cannot believe that we're still preaching eat pretzels because they're healthy for us. This is not a good idea. We cut out the refined grains in keto. And again, in a controlled study, men who ate 50 grams of refined carbs, so this is like your, your white breads and even some of your wheat breads experience higher blood sugar levels and increase in C-reactive proteins. So we do cut out carbs. We get our carbs from our low glycemic vegetables. We've done videos on this in the past and we cut out with this gluten. <gasps> Oh my God, Shelly, only folks who have celiac disease should cut out gluten. I love you all. And I'm gonna tell you this from a personal standpoint and you really have to watch my video. My life completely changed when I cut out gluten. I don't have celiac disease, I'll be the first to tell you. But when I cut out gluten, I literally lost the last 15 pounds. I literally, felt a hundred times better. I haven't had a migraine since. And we know that while we may not have a diagnosis of celiac disease, research shows that all immune diseases share common genes and immune pathways with celiac disease. So for example, the prevalence of celiac disease is estimated to be up to four times higher in those with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid condition. So when we have folks, and I tell this to all the times for my clinics, because I have a lot of folks who get mad at me, we do start with a low gluten plan. I do share the items that have some gluten and I leave it up to you to make the choice. And I can tell you my folks who cut gluten just feel 150 times better. Number four. All that meat you're eating is gonna increase inflammation of the body. Again, full disclosure, I get it, I understand. But gang, keto is not a plan of a high meat diet. It is a higher fat diet. And the other thing I understand is the processed meat, things like bolognese, things like hot dogs. It does make sense because those processed meat have something called an AGE, which is an advanced glycation end product. And yes, many influencers, you know, will walk around and will suggest the hot dogs, especially with budgets. But again, I really try to focus on just regular nice cuts of loins, you know, chicken thighs. Uh, even if you're gonna do some processed meat, look at a brand called Applegate. It is a wonderful brand for jerkies. Look at something like Vermont. I fully understand. I really get where this comes from because yeah, some people do enjoy a lot of bologna and lunch meat and, and I get it. The next round we're gonna fight is alcohol. Now, alcohol is a sensitive topic. I do work with a lot of clients who will tell me red wine is the best because that's what they were taught by the American Heart Association, but really white wine is usually lower in carbs. Wimp, wimp, win for Shelly. But really friends, alcohol in general, um, we do hopefully as a profession 
come around and say, hey, let's be careful about this. Maybe let's not joke about it as, as the mommy juice. I encourage folks to drink a wine called Fit Vine. It is lower carb. It's uh, it's it's very tasty. Have like one to two glasses a week because the more liquor we drink, yes, the more that we can increase that inflammation in our bodies. Now, this is always the response that I give to folks whenever they come at me like, you know, this is crazy. There's no way that keto is an anti-inflammatory diet. But if you really want to dive in to find out the foods and the menu I recommend for folks, you can dig into that description box. And of course, if you want to find out my journey for decreasing inflammation, getting rid of migraines and losing those last 15 pounds, you're going to want to check out this video. Thanks, gang.